That pole marks the northernmost point in America. This is a place where there are wild polar bears, native hunters living in some of the coldest climates on earth. Woo! Welcome to Barrow, Alaska, the last frontier. <laughs> <laughs> My first bite of whale. <laughs> Minus 22. <gasps> December 21st, the darkest day of the year, and I'm heading to America's northernmost and most isolated town, Barrow, Alaska. I'm excited. As the most remote town in America, there's only one flight per day from Alaska's biggest city, Anchorage, and tickets are not cheap. Midway through my first leg from Phoenix, I realized I might miss my only chance to get to Barrow today, so I ran as fast as I could to the gate. Which way? Right next Excuse me, where's the Barrow flight? Hi. Well, thank you guys for holding the plane. Your bags aren't gonna make it. No, it's fine. I have carry-on only. Almost missed a connection. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. I can't describe that feeling of relief to be the last one on the plane. And clearly, I was standing out as the only tourist on board. Are you a scientist? No. Why you ask? You look like a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a tourist. A tourist? Yeah. No way. <laughs> you don't believe me? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've just arrived in Barrow. It's like 3 p.m. right now. It's freaking dark. Welcome to Barrow. You Ace? Yes, sir. What's yeah. up, bro? How's it going? This is Ace. He was born and raised in Barrow and offered to take me around for a few days. Oh, you got a nice truck. Sweet. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> I just f ate sh <laughs> Oh yeah, it's gonna be slick. So yeah, I, I came from Phoenix. We don't we don't oh, follow yeah. the ice in Phoenix, bro. <laughs> Ow, that hurt my ass. We are starting our adventure by driving around to see some of the sights in town, and right away I know that this is going to be a wild adventure. Behind me is a famous monument here called the Whalebone Arch. Those are literally jaw bones of a whale. Pretty sure that's open sea, but it's all just frozen. Is this a coffee house? Yeah, so there's that. We got two of them right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't sit inside, you just take it in the right. Yeah, a little coffee hut. Alaska is really known for their coffee huts. Hi. Hi. What's going on? Thank you. Not only is Barrow the northernmost town in America, but it's also one of the coldest, darkest, and most isolated settlements on Earth. During the winter months, like right now, it rarely gets above minus 25 degrees, and it's completely dark outside for 30 straight days. I really like to try and enjoy the moment of either the sunrise or the sunset, because you normally, you don't really get that here. Once in a while, I mean, during the spring and fall, you'll get the sunrise and sunset. In the winter, it's you don't see the sunrise, because it never comes up. And then in the summertime, you never see it set because it doesn't dip below the horizon. It's, it just circles all around. It's so crazy. Like whenever you see the sunrise at home, you're not thinking like, wow, this is such a special treasure. But if you live here in Barrow, it's so few times in the year that you actually see the sun going above or below the horizon. That's wild, man. Yeah. The location of Barrow is so incredibly remote. I am actually closer in proximity to Tokyo than I am to New York City. That is wild. The feeling I have outside right now is like, how am I in the United States of America? Everything feels so foreign. It's so cold, this town is so small. When you walk around, you see like Wells Fargo and Ace Hardware. I just saw your store over there, Ace. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> American looking stop signs. And you're like, but this is America. It's like the weirdest feeling. Are you guys like proud Americans here? Or, or I know. Like mixed feelings? Right, I mean, it's kind of a, our own country yeah. out here, you it know. It feels like your own country. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously like economical benefits of being part of the U.S. Right, of course. So yep. that's yep. kind of nice. You know, I mean, we still like 4th of July is always a big thing. Even oh, nice. here, we'll have 4th of July games, oh, cool. stuff like that. There's also a few supermarkets, a police station, a hospital, a high school. Got good memories from there? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> a college and about five restaurants in this town of 4,500 people. This is downtown. We have a Wells Fargo, yeah. we have the police station, and this is the local native corporation building. Yeah. And here we are, we're standing right in the middle of downtown Barrow. Right. Barrow is so isolated that there are no roads connecting the town to other parts of the state. It's the busiest time for the only paved road here in town. Well, you wouldn't even know it's paved because right. it's, it's literally ice. 
and the ships cannot dock here because of the ice year round. The one and only way that people here can get food, medical supplies, and Amazon packages is through the airport. If it wasn't for this airport, then people would literally starve to death. Above all, the people of Barrow are what makes this place so incredibly special. <laughs> They're called Inupats. Oh, bloody didn't bear. Thank you. How is their culture different than other Arctic natives around the world? So far, I've gathered that they have a great sense of humor, always cracking jokes, and they are very proud to be Inupat. You could have put a billion dollars in front of me and told me that we're going to send you to an urban city and you can't come back and do what you do. I mean, I'd live here broke and have a full freezer full of food and, and be the richest guy in the world with not a dollar in my account than living in a city with a billion dollars. You couldn't convince me to move. For more than 1,500 years, the natives of Barrow have survived off eating whales, polar bears, and walruses. While you may be a little surprised and upset to hear this, you must realize that they don't hunt them for fun. They hunt them for survival. You know, it was, a, it was a way of life, right? You had to do it to survive, regardless, right? You got to go out and get food, you know, tomorrow's not promised. These uh, weapons mm -hmm. and the gun are still used today. We still use the same technology. We're not allowed to change that technology to hunt the whales we hunt now. So you can't shoot it with anything else? Nope, we're not allowed. Our government controls that, right? Mm -hmm. Our government keeps track of our quota. We fight for our quota. We're allowed so many whales a year, and yep. we can't change the technology. This is for the, the the harpoon this one doesn't have no wings so this one's for the harpoon where they throw okay and then this has got wings so it's one for the shoulder gun is this just for whales it's still both for whales, both for whales. nothing else yeah. yeah nothing else got it unless you piss somebody off how do you feel about people when when they say like oh you shouldn't be hunting whales it's obviously part of your lifestyle let's take their beef away let's take their chicken away you know it's our food too it's something that we eat we've been hunting it for generations and we want to continue hunting it but we do it scientifically now we you know they check the health of the whales they count them every couple of years so our food source is monitored by the government and scientific uh, facts keep our quota in check so yeah one whale can feed yeah, how many people yeah thousands. three thousand three thousand almost the whole town yeah it is so cold here that the houses are built on permafrost which basically means that the ground is covered in ice year round it's so cold here that the pipes for the plumbing have to go above the ground if you own a car like the majority of people here then your engine must be heated or else it won't start we typically will see temperatures ranging from negative 20 to negative 40 fahrenheit so every car you'll see will have a plug-in like this one Mine does. Inside you'll have a uh, four-way box, so you'll have a plug-in for your engine block heater. Is it running or it's, it's heating it up? Yeah, it's keeping it warm. Yeah, so that way you can start it and you won't damage your engine. And the people often get stuck in the snow. You know him? Yeah, I think that's Charlie. <laughs> yeah, I got stuck. Uh, you pulled me out? Yeah, actually. I was holding my back after lunch. I slipped past the stop sign and went straight into this. Yeah. That was funny. That a lot. Oh, yeah. Shockingly, I came to find out that there are no bars due to alcohol abuse. However, it is not illegal to get high. So there's one weed dispensary here because weed is legal in Alaska. So we're going inside to check it out. It's a nice big menu you have. Yeah, we try to keep it pretty full. And so the plane brings the weed here? Yeah. I'm just shocked that you guys have a weed store here. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. Just checking into my hotel here. If you ever wonder what a hotel room looks like in Barrow, Alaska, it looks like this. Decent looking bed. We got a TV. They even got a little microwave, stove, kitchen. Guessing this is the bathroom. Nice and small. Not bad, I've definitely had worse. You know you're in America when the light switch looks like this. And it's not like the key card thing like you find in Europe. Big day of exploration tomorrow. Got a huge day planned. And I can't wait. This place is really interesting. Barrow, Alaska. Is this really America? How is it 8.30 right now? At least there are street lights so you can kind of see what's going on. Morning, bro. Oh, you're not here? Yeah, I'm two steps ahead of you, bro. Oh, please. 
I've been shooting outside for like 10 minutes. I can't feel my fingers. Yeah. So, How's it going? I'm an idiot. I didn't put gloves on. Oh, I was no. Running around for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> We've rolled up to the one and only gas station here in Barrow. Filling up our tank. I'll get, I'll get this thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's funny because right now it's 2023 and we still don't have a card machine for it. But you, you fill up that. first and pay second. Yeah, it's funny. Um, it's very trusting. Forget your wallet. You just go in there. Hey, I forgot my wallet. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, see you later. This has to be the most expensive gasoline in the country. 750 a gallon? Yep. Seven or 730 right now. Well, it only costs 200 bucks to fill up the car and a little five gallon. <laughs> One of my best hacks is travel reward credit cards. I just use it to fill up this gas tank, which was 200 bucks. But then I get points that I can redeem for flights and hotels and upgrades and Uber rides and all kinds of stuff. I have a link below of my top recommended travel rewards credit cards. I highly recommend you get on it. If you ever wonder why I always fly first class and stuff, it's through these cards. It's a huge, huge benefit. We are getting ready to snowmobile to Point Barrow, the literal northernmost tip of the United States of America. What are some tips you suggest if I'm getting chased by a bear? Trip the one in front of you. I must say, be faster. Yeah. <laughs> Trip the one in front I, of you. Are they faster than the machine? <laughs> no. They, they can, can excel pretty quick. They can speed if up If you're not quick. on it. If it's hungry, yeah, it'll snap its ground. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it has no fear of man. Yeah. yeah, if he's hungry, he'll come. With a wind chill as low as minus 35 degrees, a lot of preparations must be made. <laughs> okay, so here's my dog. We'll try and get him to be calm here. Hello. He's not gonna bite, is he? No. You wanna give him these treats? He'll hey, kinda. Hold on. Me? Yeah. How do I give it to him? Just hand it to him. Just hold the plate to him? Yeah, hold the plate and. Sit? How do I sit? Oh, like that? <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you wanna give it to him. Oh. Like, by, by hand, if oh, by can. hand? Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me help you out. Oh, shit. Hold on. Oh my god, that's a big boy, dude. Oh, this is a really cozy house. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, it's okay. Good boy. Hey, hey. hey that's it's not okay. nice. Yeah, let's put him in the after, please. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. What's your name? Stephanie. True. Pleasure nice to meet you. Too. This is like our living room, kitchen, and then it's like a studio kind of place in here. Our little... Oh, cool. Big kind of bedroom. Yeah. Nice. You have Amazon Prime here? Yes. Prime? Yep. So it comes by plane? Yes. But it's not like fast shipping, you know. So can you, if I order something right now, if I want to order like a new ca a new camera, how many days until it's here? I would give it like two weeks. So it's not really Prime. It's yeah. more like Amazon. You get Prime... free shipping sometimes. But a lot of times, a lot of the prime shipping won't come up to here. It'll be too far out of their range, is what I'll say on that app. <laughs> when, when Prime first came out, it was everything was free shipping, so I had tires. I'd be getting, you know, cases of Red Bull, cases of, you know, Powerade. <laughs> They're like, these Barrow people, they yeah, f our they, books right now. Yeah, we, I think we uh, cost them a few dollars. <laughs> I asked Ace for a face mask, and he pulls out this, this bin of all kinds of stuff. <laughs> This goes over your whole head? Yes. Like I'm gonna rob a bank? You, I wouldn't recommend it, but yes. Getting all dressed up to go up north. Point Barrow. Oh, that's your gun, can I see it? Yeah. So, what kind of gun is this? This is Shotgun. a 4570, so lever action. Damn. Yeah, I got some weight to it. I didn't really feel like I was in Alaska until I held this in my hand. Yeah. I mean, well, if you, but like, I mean, damn, like, look, <laughs> if you look into my little yeah, yeah. This is awesome, man. This is, dude. Don't hide this from me. Man. This is what I want to see. <laughs> this, I, I call it my armor right here. Um, this is where I keep all my guns, rifles, handguns, ammunition. I mean, this is what I would typically carry out on the ice. Everyone here grew up with them, so they understand the the dangers of them, the safety, what you yeah. need to be prepared with them. It's a different way of life, I would say. Just want to pop in here quickly and say, if you're enjoying this video, subscribe to my channel. I'm working really hard to make the most epic stories from around the world, and your support means a lot to me. Comment below, let me know where you're from. I read all the comments, and I'll get back to you guys. I feel like I look like a f***ing idiot right now. <laughs> Got the gun ready? Yep. Just in case? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, my eyes are gonna freeze to death, but if you guys couldn't tell already, it's cold outside. All right, you ready? We should be set. All right. 
Update, it's freezing. I can't feel my hands or my feet. I don't even know if this camera's working right now. It's covered in snow and ice. No polar bear so far? <laughs> we are arriving. This pole behind me is the northernmost point in the United States. Holy shit, I'm freezing. This is such a cool moment. Gotta touch it. All right. Hi, Mom. I know you're warm in Arizona right now. But look where I am. <laughs> you look so cold. <laughs> I'm actually pretty warm. Just my glasses are a little finicky. They used to have an old bone graveyard over here. So do you enjoy living here in Vero? I do. It's a cool place. It is. <laughs> Due to the extreme cold and frost, both my camera and our snowmobile started to fail. That's how bitter cold it is out here, and we haven't even been outside for more than 30 minutes. We must act quick, because staying out here stranded without a snowmobile could easily mean death. Yo, is everything okay? <laughs> well, this one does not want to restart. I guess that would happen in the cold. So we better get the out of here before that one. That one will be fine. So what I'm gonna have to do is leave it here and then after this, I'd go get a sled from my dad's house, put, pull this onto that sled, and then head back. Thankfully, I'm with locals who know exactly how to navigate these situations. And sure enough, Ace's dad came to the rescue and picked me up while Ace hung back to swap snowmobiles. $14,000 machine. Oh, really? Yeah. Cadillac, man. <laughs> Cadillac. Do you think Ace will be all right? You better be. You guys gonna go back out there and wait for him. <laughs> what do they say? You can't fix stupid? <laughs> What's up, man? Did you have any problems? Oh, no. No, this one was good. It is 2.52 p.m. and uh, that little twilight is gone. It's dark. Let's jump back into what really makes Barrow so unique, and that is the indigenous people. The Inupat culture here is so beautiful, and it reminds me of my time spent in the other Arctic settlements in Greenland and Siberia. They are shockingly similar. Although most locals here still refer to this town as Barrow, the indigenous name is actually pronounced This name was adopted as the official name back in 2016. This goes to show how the natives here are setting the bar when it comes to preserving traditions and language. How can you say thank you? Thank you very much. How do you read this word right here? Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. You can't read that? Not not too much. I wouldn't be able to pronounce it correctly. I would pronounce it like this. Kiksikraski kunik inuagvimunun. Another way the Inupat people celebrate their culture is through the art of tribal tattooing, most notably with three vertical lines stretching from their lower lip down their chin. Our word is kakinik. So when you go to the lower 48 and you have that tattoo, what kind of things do people say? I've had my tablon for about 12 years now and I get more good compliments than, you know, and people are just very curious majority of the time. I've only encountered a small handful of very awkward, you know, things that people have said, you know, we don't have the rest of the world as easily accessible to us like everybody else. Same with other societies, they don't have access to us, so they don't know about us. We're not mythical creatures. We might be mythical, but we are not creatures. <laughs> Life is so different up here than on the mainland, or as they call it, the lower 48. I just can't help but wonder, how do people have fun in a town with no malls, no movie theaters, and no bars? Especially when it's dark outside 24-7 in the winter. Mm. We popped into this little diner place. What's it called? Uh, Nigavik Put. Nigavik what? Nigavik Put. Nigavik Put. Yep. If you can say that five times fast. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's very much a diner. This beef is definitely imported. Yeah. <laughs> I guess because there's nothing to do here. I mean, there's not much to do here. Right. Eating is, yeah. eating is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and food here is not cheap. We're going to see what kind of crazy prices we can find yeah. in a supermarket in Barrow, Alaska. <laughs> I mean, the supermarket here looks identical to the one in my neighborhood in Arizona, which is pretty cool. Got all the same products. 
12 Dr. Peppers for 15 bucks. One Gatorade, $7. At home, this is about $1.99. Oh yeah, if you go to a gas station, <laughs> is that unheard of for you? Yeah. 32 bucks for some pizza. I just spotted coconuts. Ace, can I tell you something funny right now? So in a month, I'm gonna be in the Philippines, uh -huh. and this coconut will be 20 cents. Oh my God, I can believe that, I believe that. 20 cents in the Philippines, <laughs> and here I am in Alaska, and this is 10.99. So when people ask you, like, how do you not get bored? You know what's funny? Actually, we just bought two board games <laughs> See, uh, totally. today. That, that makes sense now. Yeah, <laughs> man. The whole time we were in the supermarket, Ace kept his car running, because if he turns it off, then it could freeze, the battery could freeze. So how come 5,000 people are living in Barrow, this isolated land that is closer to the North Pole than it is to his own state capital? First off, the Inupat Eskimos have lived in Barrow for more than 1,500 years, and there is evidence of it. And I say the word Eskimo because I quickly learned that it is not an offensive word to the people here. We grew up known as Eskimos, um, Inupiaq Eskimos. We have the Northern Eskimos and the Southern Eskimos. Inuit, Inupiaq, Inuit is a word people. Inuit is a person. But the word Eskimo is not offensive? Call me no Tongan or Samoan because I'm an Eskimo. You know, a lot of people take offense to that. You know, I take pride to that, man. The word Eskimo? Yeah, yeah. You know, just because, you know, they think that, you know, we're savages, you know. It's pretty, pretty badass to be, you know, labeled that, you know what I mean? More than 60% of Barrow's residents are native Inupat Eskimos, and the other 40% are a mix of mainland Americans and foreigners, mostly Asians and Pacific Islanders, who come here to make higher wages starting at 20 bucks an hour. So you came no, from, from Philippines? Why did you come here the first time? Oh, right here is like, you know, the big is more than higher than the lower for the But it's so cold here, bro. I know, but um, the money is here. Are there a lot of Filipinos here? Yeah, it's kind of like mm, 30% to 40% Filipino, it's already right here. What? Uh -huh. 30%? Yeah, yeah. Grew up in America some more all my life. And so why the hell would you come to Barrow? That's a good question, brother. <laughs> you know, over here it's just uh, working wise, living wise, it's good, you know. And of course, where there are immigrants, they always bring with them their delicious food. Getting some lunchtime in the pitch black. At Osaka restaurant, there is an Asian restaurant here. It's actually both a Korean and a Japanese restaurant. My two favorite cuisines. I was just in Japan like a month ago and... Is it very Dude, similar? for real, if it's similar to Japan. How are you? Hello. <laughs> are you Japanese or Korean? I'm Korean. Oh, 한국말 조금 해요. Oh, 잘하십니다. 영어서, 영어 선생님 있었어요, 병택. Yeah. You look like a Korean too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. What is it like to live here? I love better. Why? Air is good. Compared to Los Angeles, think about it. Yes, the air is clean, so quiet. Especially better people. Kimchi jjigae. Amazing, thank you. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. There is a sizzling bowl of kimchi jjigae. That smells amazing and when it's minus 20 degrees outside there's nothing more I crave than this dish mm. so this is a bowl of kimchi soup so there's a lot of pieces of kimchi inside of it oh, like okay. this but it's stew so the kimchi it's not like oh, raw yeah. and there's pieces of tofu like this big chunks okay. of tofu and there's this pork I think this is pork yeah and then there's like onions and just other kind of spices yeah. and it's all mixed together it's spicy you like spicy a little bit. You won't uh, like that it then. Probably would be, uh, it's yeah, overkill. Would be a yeah. rough day for me. Yeah. Mmm. My shoes are off. When I'm here, I feel like I'm in Korea. When I'm eating this food. Yeah. The taste. Come from here. Come from here. You guys have a nice day. Show how to pronounce it. Show how to Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a surprisingly good meal and honestly one of the best Korean restaurants that I've had outside of South Korea. We headed back outside into the frozen tundra and I attempted to see something that's been on my bucket list forever. The Northern Lights. Until now, the closest I've ever been to seeing them is when I went to Siberia and my buddy Amar saw them out the plane window. Can you believe I've never seen them? That's, that's hard to believe. For me, of course I live here so I see them every day. Straight here, you'll kind of see the a little bit of a streak. I, I do see the streak. Yeah, yeah I see the streak. It's very faintly. If you could whistle, like a loud, long whistle, you could bring them down closer. The noise. Um, I don't understand. Yeah, it's kind of like an old tail.
Well, yet again, it was another failure to see the Northern Lights, but this is just a lesson that not everything goes your way. If you are watching this and you've seen the Northern Lights, let me know where in the comments below so I can get more ideas for next time. Another interesting thing about Barrow is the oil industry with nearby Prudhoe Bay, the single largest oil deposit in North America with 25 billion barrels worth. As you might imagine, that brings in a lot of jobs and wealth, but the oil supply is finite and will eventually run out. As the world turns to renewable energy, there is a looming threat of the oil industry moving out, which would cause an economic downturn. When you think about it, most oil-rich places around the world, like Dubai, can easily make up for this by boosting its tourism sector. But Barrow simply doesn't have the infrastructure for mass tourism. I mean, think about it. I'm the only tourist here right now, and the locals think I'm nuts, remember? A tourist? Yeah. No way. <laughs> Alright, let's get real. It is time now for more food. But not just any dish. It's the whale meat that I've been eager to try since learning all about it. Ace's family kindly invited me over to their house for a delicious home-cooked meal. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm Drew. I'm Carolyn. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ace and his family are such incredible hosts, and I can already tell that this is going to be a very memorable evening. Fish is another staple up yeah, here. So it's called whitefish. Uh, there's four types of whitefish in our region up here. Do you eat uh, the fish raw like sashimi? Yeah. This is gold here. This is the, the entire, remember I said the bearded seal? Yeah. Oh, that's what that is? All the meat is dried and turned into oil. It's been dried. It's been hung outside on a meat rack for weeks. The oil is from the the blubber of the seal. Black gold. My mom, when I I'm the only one of her kids that mm -hmm. love this, so she asked my neighbor, who was not native, can I please <laughs> hide this in your freezer? Because if I don't, you don't let me, my daughter will eat it. Oh. Explain to me the process. I'm just cutting it with an iron. What this is, is cooked and this is not cooked. So, not cooked means it's raw. So pink is the natural color. Of kind whale. of depends on the size of the whale. This is whale too. Yes, whale meat. Yes, that's the outside layer of the whale, right? That's the skin. The, you see the black whale. That's the this skin. This is the very skin, that very outside of the, the whale. Skin. No. The skin. You just uh, cut this like butter and throw a little salt on it and eat it. You, you always peel the bottom layer off because that's the only part that your body doesn't digest. Is it healthy? Oh yeah, it keeps you warm in the winter around here. Oh yeah. Yeah, the blubber is what keeps you, the Eskimos warm. This is, thank you again, thank you so much for okay, having me now, over. This is a great experience. We love to A little time. chunk of heart um, That's from the heart? whale. Whale heart. Yes. Ooh, you gonna, how big is the whale heart? 300 some pounds, honest to God. A 40 foot whale will have a 350 yeah. foot, yeah. I mean 350 yeah. pound heart. They have humongous hearts. Did you know that? Oh yeah. I cut them up. <laughs> <laughs> this would be considered an extremely bizarre dish anywhere in lower 48. Oh, yeah. If you went to any other state and said, I'm going to prepare you this big whale dinner, they would all be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sit down, move your cameras. Right. Everyone's going to say a prayer we're going to eat. Thank you, Lord, for this food we're about to pre eat. And we thank you for the whales that gave their lives to feed us. We thank you for the whalers, the cooks and the butchers. Lord, we thank you for this nourishment that is the purest food on earth. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you dipping in the oil of the seal? Seal oil, yes. White fish. White fish. Mm. The oil is so pure. They did a study. Whale oil, seal oil is so pure. I don't know. Are you okay with salt, Drew? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm okay with however you're okay with it. Do you want a Sprite or water or tea? Or... Okay. None of that, none of that right now. You gotta put that camera down and eat some yeah. of it. Mmm, delicious. I've had a similar taste in um, Siberia. I don't, I don't think it's the same exact fish, but they definitely don't dip it in that oil. See a bearded seal. I don't really know what a bearded seal is. It's a big, long, oh, white, so it. bearded okay. seal. It's a much bigger than a harbor seal. Do you see these small little yeah, seals? These are the big boys. Yeah, this one is a big boy. He's like a sea lion. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> bearded seal. Oh, it's pretty tough. I didn't want to admit it, but the taste of that seal smothered in its oil was absolutely the most difficult thing I've ever had to swallow in my life. And I've eaten some pretty crazy things. Taste is not bad, it's just tough. Oh yeah, that's meaty. 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you got that on film. <laughs> <laughs> Try the uno, like the, yeah. cook, the cook part. My first bite of whale in my life. Bowhead whale. Bowhead whale. Chewy. On the other hand, the whale was surprisingly delicious. Not that extreme taste. No, because you didn't put salt on it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. And the southern guys. Eskimos, they use mustard. They use soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they that on here. Whale heart. Different texture, different taste. Much different taste. Mm -hmm. Close to beef heart. Because it's a mammal. A whale is a mammal. So it's just like this, but that's raw. Yep. Raw whale. Why is it? Huh. This was downright the chewiest thing I've ever put into my mouth. Oh my god. You've only chewed down three times and then swallowed. Oh. You're not I'm trying to chew to the very end. No, and no. now it got stuck in my teeth. Oh no, yeah. Ace was just making fun of his dad for being the biggest ice cream connoisseur known to man. So you can guess what we were having for dessert. Not my favorite brand, but... Different brand. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna fit too well on your uh, ice cream rack here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to that's start it. Blue, Blue Bunny is my favorite brand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I haven't been able to get it lately. Why not? It's Plank. just not available at the store, yeah. Planes aren't taking it in? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm one of those that consumes more ice cream than he should. As you can tell right here. <laughs> Thanks for dinner, man. You bet. I owe you. Yeah. Buy me a beer. I'll see you tomorrow. With the hey, airport. man. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You awesome bet. experience. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate that. Too bad you didn't see a bear. Yeah, next time. If you would have needed a ride back, you would have run all the way. <laughs> 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 What an amazing experience that dinner was. And I keep burping up that bearded seal. I'm not joking. That was probably the most intense flavor I've ever had. Coming here is like a full on adventure. It's not a vacation. Don't expect fast Wi-Fi or conveniences or chain restaurants that you've heard of. None of that exists here. It's raw, it's cold, it's beautiful. The nature is stunning. There's a lot of nothingness and stillness. And that's the beauty of coming up to Barrow. And honestly, everyone is so friendly. Like the Inupat people, they're just, they have a great sense of humor. I think you guys see that from this video. Like they're all funny and they just, they don't take life too seriously. And that's, that's an amazing thing. And uh, I'm really glad I came up here. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about this really isolated community in America. And uh, I think this won't be my last visit. What's up everyone, I'm Drew Binsky and today I'm gonna show you what I think is the world's cheapest country and it's called Afghanistan. I've now spent over three weeks traveling across six provinces in Afghanistan and I think that this country is truly the most affordable in terms of your everyday items. 15 cents for bottle of water. That's a pretty good price, man. It's definitely gonna make my cheapest country in the world video. Afghanistan becomes even cheaper when you exchange dollars on the street as opposed to an ATM because the black market rate gives you 15% more bang for your buck. Today, I'm in the beautiful western city called Herat with my buddy Thomas, and even though it's one of the biggest cities in Afghanistan, it's still really affordable. So just to prove to you how cheap it is out here, I'm gonna run around the city and purchase several random items. Our first stop, as usual, is the market. Oh man! Yes, very cool. <laughs> which is casually located next to Alexander the Great's former home dating back to 330 BC. Legend has it that this market has also been around for thousands of years. We're at this market here, we got all different kinds of seeds and rice and grains and uh, we're gonna buy one of them. Uh, it's uh, the hash seeds. So you, you're buying it to grow hash? Uh, no, actually, it's uh, we are going to make a, a nice drink out of this. Does it make you high? Yeah, the, the drink is very nice. It gives you a very nice feeling. How much is that in dollars? Uh, like probably 10 to 20 cents. And this is a heavy bag, like maybe two pounds. Oh, so we're on the broom it. street and we're gonna buy a broom and see how much they cost. How much are they? Uh, it's 50 halves each. 50 halves. 35 to 40 cents for a broom. Literally, a handmade broom. So they make it with this like yellow duct tape, rubber bands, and then it's a special plant that they use. This is so cool. What is he selling? 
says uh, cucumber per kg is uh, 15 apps. Yeah, which is like 10 cents per kg. 10 cents per kilogram of fresh cucumbers. Okay, let's buy one. Sure, like lots of people are gathering. Okay, so yeah. they're just kids though. So for all of these items here, the broom, the cucumbers, and the hashies, we paid 80 apps, which is about a dollar. One US dollar for all of these things. In the USA, let me just tell you something. This would be five to eight dollars. This would be ten dollars so and this would be maybe five we're looking at twenty dollars in the usa for all of this stuff okay twenty dollars okay. and here in afghanistan it's one dollar <laughs> after the market it was onwards to try my favorite beverage in afghanistan called pomegranate juice because now is the peak season the three of us hopped in a tuk-tuk and we were on a mission to find the freshest palm juice in town but let's not overlook how fun these three-wheeled taxis are one of the coolest ways to get around the city is by tuk-tuk or rickshaw so we are going to uh, negotiate a price now to drive us around the city uh, and it's going to be an awesome time That was really tense, man. Holy crap. Can we talk about what just happened? So we stopped outside of the mosque here to get a tuk-tuk and immediately the, they came and talked to us. Nor was putting on, fixing my uh, my headscarf and that immediately, I don't know, made them super suspicious for some reason and they just came up. And there were like military people standing out there and uh, when, uh, when they saw us, they were just a little bit suspicious and wanted to make sure everything is fine. Well, we are now riding in a tuk-tuk, which is... Oh. <laughs> I can't talk because the horns. It is the local transportation here in Afghanistan. And, uh, uh, Nora, how much does it cost to take a, a ride around town? Uh, uh, it's like 30 amps. So, 40 cents? Yeah, something like 40 cents. Yeah. Something like 40 cents to ride across the city of Herat, which is extremely cheap. And it's also really fun. How are you enjoying it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm still in shock from what just happened. Yeah, but dude, no, okay. this, is, this is great. Now we're in disguise because we're in a yellow tuk tuk and we just look, no one's gonna randomly stop us and be like, hey, totally. There are no traffic laws here whatsoever. It's no. just like pull forward and people just dodge you. That's it. Like, it's, no I rules. I saw an old man almost get run over <laughs> and he just kind of like sped up towards the sidewalk and then didn't even look, wasn't even mad at the car. He just kept walking after that. After a really fun ride, we made it. This pomegranate vendor literally set up his shop in the middle of two busy roads. Afghanistan never fails to impress. Nor, how much is one cup? Uh, this one right here is like uh, 50 apps. So 80 cents? Yeah, oh, it's something like 60. <sighs> that was cool. We headed for lunch at a fancy restaurant and look at all of this delicious food. Oh, look how it just falls off the bone. Wow. Oh my Dude. God. How is this possible? Obviously, this wasn't the cheapest meal that we could find, but I wanted to let you know that Afghan food is extremely underrated. As we were eating, our driver secretly planned for us to meet up with his friends who invited us to smoke something that is popular in Afghanistan. So what's, so what's happening right now, Nor? There are a bunch of friends of him and uh, they were planning to get together to, to chill a little bit and uh, he called them so he said, okay, okay, we are going to like their normal location where they always gather. So they, they invited us? Yes. So we've just been invited to hang out with some local guys and smoke some hash. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I saw him on the first video that you did about hash in Afghanistan, the top comment was like, this is one heck of a story, and that's totally what this feels like right now. It's just like, when uh, when in the world would I ever imagine smoking hash in Afghanistan? But this is like where it's from, right? I have a little bit in my uh, pocket. Oh, cool. Do you just have it for yourself? Like, you just have a hash? Yes, just, you know. Why do you have that, Nor? You know, true. Just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, Dude, like, I love how he just whipped out a hat. Yeah, like... like uh, we're almost arriving uh, <laughs> at our driver's house, which is where we're meeting his friends. Yeah. You feeling nervous or are you feeling alright? Uh, I feel a little bit nervous being outside of the city center, but... I put my full trust in Nor, man. Nor would never take us to a place that he didn't feel comfortable. Seriously, so... Um, we should be good.
Oh no man. Way. Dude, oh, dude, I can't believe this. We just turned the corner and there's a bunch of dudes up here playing local instruments, like waiting for our arrival. Can you believe this thing? Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. How are you? Salam alaikum. Salam kubi. What have we just walked into? <laughs> I'm not gonna put my mouth on it, I'm just gonna suck over my fingers here. Yeah. Look at this thing. That is strong. Oh my God. Very good, nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting high in Afghanistan. <laughs> chilling, man. Just chilling. <laughs> so, the coolest part about this experience is you feel like you're hanging out with friends in You're 60. We can't speak to each other, but it doesn't matter. Like, we're bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> How much does it cost for like a stick of hash? Maybe the, the, the one that I showed you before? Yeah. That one costs like 50 ass. 50 ass, so less than one dollar. Oh, it's like almost half a dollar. 50 cents. 50 cents, <laughs> 50 cents oh, for that whole thing that he was holding? I'm getting a little stone here. They all think we understand what they're saying, yeah. but... They look straight at us. I don't understand a single word. I just do thumbs up and thumbs up and nod your head. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was a dream almost. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. That's how we have to get back to the I know. <laughs> Feeling all good and giggly, we hit the streets and staring out the window instantly became ten times more fun and exciting. You guys have no idea how much chaos is happening out here, but it's organized chaos, and somehow, it's all beautiful. Newer told us about another surprise destination that he wanted to take us, and of course, we accepted. So we heard about a local wrestling match here today, randomly. It's Friday, so it just happens to be today. Ticket counter. How much is it to get in? 10 F? 15 cents a person. The admission fee is 15 cents. To come watch a game. To go to watch a wrestling match in Afghanistan. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so the concession stand here is just a man selling about nine kinds of nuts, all different kinds of fresh nuts. How much is the peanuts here? Twenty apps. Twenty apps. So that costs more than the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is a sand pit in front of us with young kids. Well, I'm seeing kids that are like five right now. <laughs> is that the jury right there? Yeah, there's a judge right there with a mic. When they start every event, they started with uh, some verses of Quran. getting really crowded and feeling a little tense. Just don't want to stay in one location for too long. It took a bit of time to get started. The next day, we flew out to Kabul and there was one more thing that I wanted to get to show you how cheap Afghanistan is. I need to get a haircut. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do in foreign countries. Like when else do you get to spend like 10 minutes with a complete stranger? You know, it's, it's always a fun experience and here on the streets of Afghanistan, uh, we're gonna get a, a, a little street cut. Whoa, whoa. Aggressively uh, pulled forward here. Oh, wait, how, how much is he trimming it? Like, like his, like his. Yeah, yeah, 50 Fs, but can he make it the same length as his? I'm in Kabul, Afghanistan, and I'm getting a beard trim literally on the sidewalk of a busy road. I'm not sure how clean these are, but I'm not gonna think about that. Drew is crazy to do this right now. I, you're out of your mind, man. This is like what it's all about. <laughs> Leave the mustache. <laughs> oh, the comb. So I think it's gonna cut my lip. I'd rather, I'd rather him do that. Oh, oh guys, never hide us. Hide. Ow, he yanked the hair. So 
scissors, making nervous. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Out of all my time in Afghanistan, this is the most scared I've been. That was a great beer trim. Teshikur, how much does that cost? So 80 cents, 70 to 80 cents for that beer trim. All right guys, so there you have it. The cheapest country in the world, Afghanistan. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It was really fun to go around and uh, truly, truly it is the cheapest country. And in case you're wondering, the next cheapest countries are Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, uh, Iran and Uzbekistan uh, and Vietnam. So that's it for today's video guys. Uh, thank you for watching and Thomas, you enjoying? This is the wildest thing I've ever done. So uh, yeah, I am enjoying. Awesome. All right guys, take it easy. See you later. Somewhere in the Philippines, there is a 107 year old woman named Wang Ode who is the last remaining tribal tattoo artist of her kind. She gets her needles from trees, her ink from charcoal, and her beading stick from bamboo. I am on a mission to meet the legend herself and discover a part of the Philippines that you may not know existed. It is 6 a.m. We are getting ready to go on an adventure of a life to meet Wang Ode. Deanna and I are joined by our driver, G, and our camera guy, Mike. None of us have ever been all the way up north in the Philippines before, and the 15-hour journey into the mountains to get there is gonna be insane. We've made it to the highest point in the entire country of the Philippines on any highway. 7,400 feet high, right here. Check this out. See on the bathroom here, they charge five pesos if you pee and ten pesos if you poop. Be honest. I only <laughs> peed, I only no poopy. <laughs> only pee. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Don't fall. I'm not. I'm good, good. I know, I got you. You're not gonna fall. You can just see the views behind me are stunning. It's this massive green valley of rolling hills and mountains. It seemingly goes on forever. The Philippines continues to impress every time I come here, anywhere I go in this country. As you can see, the Philippines is not only beaches, coconut trees, and hot sunshine. The mountain region here is tribal and feels something like Sapa Valley in Vietnam or Northern Laos. There is one special destination along the way that I've been wanting to see for years. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's known as the eighth wonder of the world. The Banawe Rice Terraces. This place is actually on the 20 peso bill. It's so famous. Legend has it that centuries ago, the Ifogao people were carving these steps. And it's just so charming and peaceful up here. Breathtakingly beautiful, the rice terraces are truly a miracle of engineering. Seeing nature tamed and organized so delicately and precise by humans is quite the experience. So you're an Ifogao tribe? Yes, you are Ifogao. How, how old are you? 89. Sir. 89? This is the rice terrace, but the Ifugao people make this? Yes, the people make the feel it. She says she doesn't know Tagalog, the, the national um, language of the Philippines. Yes. Only English and Ifugao mm -hmm. language? Yes. And she has this beautiful feathers in her hair, mm -hmm. and we're overlooking the absolutely incredible Banaue rice terraces. Do you know who Wang Ode is? She is in Kalinga. Yeah, Kalinga. She does Kalinga. a tattoo. Not only is Wangod famous around these parts, but the entirety of the Philippines and the whole world. As the oldest person ever to be on the cover of Vogue magazine, she started tattooing in her youth after learning the skills of her father, a master in the region. Wangod is truly a feminist icon, having shattered the tradition of men being the only ones allowed to practice the art of tribal tattooing. Her technique is called batok, the traditional hand tap tattooing which is far more painful than modern methods. But the most surreal part about all of this is that Wang Ode has no children, which means after she's gone, this type of tribal tattooing will become totally extinct. We headed deeper into the mountains and after hours of driving, we ended up in a charming Filipino town. We're just arriving here in Sagada. Really, really cool looking place. There's a huge flea market here on the street and the people are just very nice and humble and they have this distinct look. Certainly doesn't feel like anywhere I've been in the Philippines. Behind me you can see all this fresh produce and all these vegetables and fruits are grown locally. This is the biggest city here. It's kind of like the hub in this province. So all the nearby villagers kind of come here there are numbers in there, and then when you pick one, you're gonna win something or not. It's like bingo? No, it's no, a it's like draw block. 91. Oh, that's so funny. That's sad. Okay, guys, you all try. This is hilarious. You pick a number and yeah. then you win a prize. Four. Two. 
here. Yeah. Thank you. Ate. 322. It's almost like those scratch off cards that they have in the US. Yay! That sticker. What do you want to win? A sticker and a necklace. Sticker. Hmm. We're stopping to buy a jacket because it's going to be cold tomorrow morning when we hike the mountain. And we don't have uh, jackets, so <laughs> gotta do it here. You look cute. Yeah. It's cute. Okay. It's like sporty. Yeah. Travel tip you don't have to bring everything with you umbrellas, jackets, just buy it as you go. And it's cheap, it's like 10 bucks for a jacket. And you're supporting the local economy. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, it's a little too small. I don't like the style. It's like a biker jacket. Actually, this might be good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Best okay new, new fashion. fashion. <laughs> best okay new fashion. <laughs> Number 21 style Vogue design wear best. All right, we're ready for Wang Ode. After a great day of exploring the beautiful nature and relaxing towns up north, we are heading to our little guest house to get some rest before the big day. Do you have any reservation place? Yeah, on Agoda for two nights, two rooms. This is a pretty sweet spot. I mean, it's nice in here. It's clean, it's rustic, traditional. Not a bad place to spend the night, really. It's been an amazing day exploring the northern region of the Philippines. I had a blast. I'm exhausted from driving like 14 hours today. Got the charging station going over here, getting all the gear ready to go for tomorrow. We got a 4 a.m. wake up call to go meet the famous Wang Ode. See you guys in the morning. Yo, what's up, bro? Ready? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Look okay. at her, she wakes up like perfectly beautiful at 4.45. Who does that? Behind me is a sea of clouds, welcoming the sunrise in the morning. Absolutely amazing. God, is that you? <laughs> Babe, your country is beautiful. I know, it's amazing. What a spectacular sunrise. I mean, you can hear the roosters talking, the tuk-tuks moving, the birds chirping. Look at the clouds there. Morning! After another hour and a half of driving across the windy roads, we made it to the footsteps of Wango's village. We are looking for our local friend, Remy. It's a bit complicated because there's no phone signal here, zero. And uh, I don't know where we need to hike to. That must be her. Hi. Hi. Are you Remy? Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you arrived first before me. So which village are we hiking to up, up we there? We go down and we go up. Mm. That one? Yeah. Oh, cool. Little did we know that there's a hefty hike up the mountain to reach Wangod's village. And we've just been told that she might not even be able to meet us today, which means that I can't get a tattoo and this whole story would be scrapped. It's risky in general to come here because it all depends on her mood. That explains why tourists often have to spend two or three nights here before getting to meet her. Our hike to Wangod has just begun. Going down and up and down this beautiful countryside. How was Wangod? Where are the tattoos? <laughs> Oh, they're gone. Okay. Hold my hand, you got it? Yeah. How's your balance? It's okay. It's bad. One step at a time. Along the journey to Wango, there's a beautiful waterfall that we cross. It's just so surreal out here. How are you, man? Very happy, excited to see the legend. So you do this walk every day? Mm, most likely, yeah. This is how I make money. So. Does Wang Ode do the walk? Sometimes. If she needs to. Like go to the hospital. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Tired? Yeah. Almost there. What's the gun for? Uh, yeah. I had a big gun. I don't know why. Every step you take. <laughs> so this hike is a little more difficult than expected. Oh, we're out of shape. Almost there. I can see the top. We're just about here. Babe, can you believe we made it finally? Is this the real it? Yeah. After that long we're drive. Almost hike. We've made it. Woo! It's a cute little village.
There are about 800 people living in this village called Buskalan, and they are so isolated that nobody else can understand their native language. <laughs> it is very much tribal up here, with unique faces and colorful clothing, and everyone, especially women, are proudly showing their tribal marks. This is the snake skin, yeah. Your snake. <laughs> snake ladder and hourglass. Obviously, the, the views here of the mountains are just absurd. You can feel the presence of Wang Gode while walking around this village, and it's so charming. Her face is literally everywhere, and there's even multiple souvenir shops with merchandise to take home. I just picked up these three awesome magnets of Wang Ode from the souvenir shop, and I'm gonna send them to three winners. All you have to do is click that link down below, subscribe to my email newsletter, where I send out travel updates in real time, exclusive hacks and tips that aren't told anywhere else. And also by signing up, you're getting a free ebook of my top 100 travel photos from visiting every country in the world. And while you're at it, I encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel. I'm going all around the world telling the best stories. It's a pleasure to have you guys here with me. And with that being said, let's go back to the story. While waiting for Wango to wake up, we went to the one and only restaurant in town. Cheesy hot dog. <laughs> Childhood memories? Well, this, this is the uh, no, Filipino style breakfast. This is corned beef hash. This is just egg. And this is red hot dogs. Tender juicy, I would know. So in the Philippines, they don't have knives. They just cut everything with the edge of the spoon. Oh my god. Okay. That's know. called a lot of rice. Purple rice. Sinangag. This is the way that you cut the hot dog. You just take the edge of the spoon. Filipino style. Mmm. Tender juicy. The hot dog. I'm not sure how they get it to be so red. It's food color. <laughs> Corn beef hash. Mmm. Garlicky. It's almost like a, a meatball that's smashed together. I was just told by Remy, our tour guide, that Wangod is still sleeping. It's now 8.12 and she's usually awake at 7, so we hope that she's feeling okay. There's always a risk of coming here that she just doesn't want to wake up and doesn't want to see anyone, so fingers crossed because she came a long way to get here and I really don't want to have to cancel this trip in this video. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go on a little village tour and check this place out, take you guys around this really special place in the mountains. I think there's a secret to living really long life here in this village because I'm seeing a lot of old people, old faces. Believe it or not, it was a disaster to get permission to fly my drone, which never is an issue in the Philippines. The locals told me that the police would actually shoot it down from the sky like they've done with others in the past. The reason is because of tribal wars and land disputes. Remember that guy I just saw who was carrying that gun over his shoulders? I had no idea about any of this until now, so the drone needs to come down quickly before I get into trouble. Yeah, there's a conflict between Bugna and Betwagan because of the land dispute. So it's been going on for years. So what happens if you go there? They will kill you. Really? Yeah. So people are dying? Yeah. They're shooting each other in the mountain. Really? Yeah. Doesn't that make you scared? Everyone gets scared, of course, but only men can do the shooting to protect the village, to protect the women. So it's normal to hear about people shooting people? Yeah. You would think it's safe because it's the Philippines and everybody's friendly and happy. Yeah. But it's not safe. For us, because we live in Buscalan, we are safe. But the, but the people in Bugnay, of course, they feel they, they're scared. We've just been told that Wangwood is awake, she's taking a shower, and we will be meeting her very soon. I've just decided now to get a tattoo. I don't know what of or where, but it'll be my third one. I can't wait to meet her, and it's such a blessing to be here. This is the waiting area where people usually sit and wait. How long have we been talking about this? Yeah, many years? Yeah. Don't be nervous. Seven years. Three dots. That's the famous one. All right, we are just seconds away from going into Wango's house and meeting her. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. She's in such high demand. There's so many tourists that come here. You're from Hawaii? Yeah. You came here just for Wango? Yeah, just for Wango. What do you think about Wango? She's a legend. This is her house right here. It's a two-story building. She has the kitchen here. 
the bedroom over there. She eats very healthy, so you can see there's a lot of healthy dishes everywhere. So much anticipation. Mm. But you can't rush her. Having a lot of anxiety just standing here waiting because the journey was so long to get here. She's getting ready and there's like a lot of anticipation to actually meet her. I'm feeling quite nervous actually. How are you feeling? I'm nervous. I've always wanted to see her. Little Chloe. And then there she was. <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> She's so cute. She's taking us to a different place to get tattooed. We are going up these windy little staircases. <laughs> So we are roaming to the other side of the village to, to get our tattoos. Not speaking, so we're just kind of following. I don't know where we're going, but we're walking through the whole village. <laughs> Take off the shoes. <laughs> All right. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm good. She speaks a little English. Yes. A little bit of English? Mm -hmm. My name is Drew. Diana. Diana, my wife. Asawara. Asawa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she just gave me the high five. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> Change it. Mm -hmm. okay. No baby yet. No baby yet. It's a it's a really big pleasure to meet you. Do you know what year you were born? So you couldn't. No, she doesn't know because there was no calendar before. So. They are aware that she was born on March, if it's like now March because it's the planting time, rice planting time. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> I've read articles on Wikipedia that say that you're 105. Other people say you're 80. Do you have any estimation of your actual age? Uh, classmates before died at 109 years old, so it's like she's... Uh, Five, five years older than her. Mm. That's where they base the age. Ah, okay. So what age does she think she is? 106. Where did your interest come from with tattoos? She likes it because her father does the tattoo. Yeah, her father did it. Mm -hmm. it the answer stores told them to get a tattoo because that tattoo stays on your skin forever. When you die, you can take it with you. How old were you when you started doing the tattoos? Around 11 years old. Around 11. Years. How does it feel to be famous? You're all over the internet, including the video that I'm making right now. Everyone knows about you. Like, that didn't exist before 2007. So tell me about this life now. <laughs> She's very, very happy. <laughs> and, and humble. Yeah. Very humble. All right. Babe, do you want to get a tattoo? Yes. Where do you want to get it? I think in my leg. Back so, there? Yeah. I think I'm going to do it on the top of my leg. We're going to get her signature tattoos. The three dots. She's taking out all the ingredients to do the tattoo. The bamboo yeah. stick and the, the ink. Your water? So she uses water? Yeah. yeah. To mix the ink. Where does the ink from? Charcoal, uh, from the bottom of the pipe. Really? Mm. It's just charcoal? Yeah, charcoal, plain charcoal and water. It is pretty wild how the only ingredients are charcoal and water. And then she just takes a stick, a bamboo stick, and she just hits it really fast a lot of times. It's really, really special to witness this. It's something that's been on my bucket list for so many years. Diana, how many years has it been on my bucket list for? Seven years. Seven years. Uh, I'm still fangirling. But I, I've read so many articles about her and seeing her now right in front of me is an honor, such an honor. Wang Ode prefers to remove her jacket while giving tattoos so she can show off her amazing art. I mean, seriously, she takes beauty to the next level and I am so in love with her vibe and her personality. All right, so the time has come. I am now getting a tattoo from the legendary Wang Ode. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh my god, that stick is big. <laughs> it doesn't feel great. <laughs> Just do my meditation. Ow! <laughs> she, she's done this 10,000 times and she still laughs.
The pain of that needle being hit into my thigh thousands of times in the exact same spot was unexplainable. And Wang Ode was having the best time of her life. <laughs> Ow, Wang Ode, you're killing me. Ow. Can I get some water, please, before I die? Mm -hmm. Well, despite the pain, Ow. it's nice to look out at the view of the hills. It's just piercing into my skin. Whew. This is my third tattoo and by far the most painful one. Um, I'm done? Yeah. With all three? Yeah. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry that I'm such a baby. It hurts. <laughs> it's very much an honor to have this tattoo and, and to meet you. Oh, I get to keep this. Is this the one that she did on me? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Wow. After every tattoo, Wangode gives you the bamboo stick as a souvenir to take home. <laughs> Thank oh, <yay>. you. <laughs> She's adorable. She's so cute. All right, so who's your next victim? Can Me. you do my wife? Mm, yeah. Okay. It hurts, my love. Does it hurt a lot? Okay. <clears throat> so this is your third tattoo like me. We both got our third tattoos. <laughs> Deanna, on the other hand, takes a tattoo like a champ. What does the three dots mean? Her grandchildren? Aww. That's so sweet. Wangod, how many tattoos have you given in your life? Too many, too long. Millions, <laughs> millions of tattoos. That's so cool, Deanna. It's Done? Yeah. It's really Thank cool. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Did that hurt? Huh? Did it hurt? Yeah. Well, what's it on? Thank you. Thank you. Well, up a pop. She's asking if we have ki if we're gonna have kids. Tell her in two years. Two years. Yeah. Two years. <laughs> What's, uh, can you ask, what's her advice for marriage life? Yeah, you should love each other forever. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Mm. No cheating. That's the best uh, secrets of happy marriage. Wang Wad, I want to give this to you. <coughs> this is my Whoa. bracelet that I got from the States. I want to give it to you. Wow, you love that bracelet. It's our heart. Yay! Thank you. She's always laughing. Oh, that was amazing. Look at the blood that comes off on it. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> so what just happened was Wango did her signature <laughs> grab. All the tourists that come here, she she kind of does that as a as a thank you for coming. Eto maganda. Maganda. So now we're just kind of chilling. The interview's done. The tattoos are done. We're just kind of. Living a day in the life of the famous Wang Ode. <coughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's demanding us to have a baby. <laughs> wow, she's uh, she's not shy at all. Have you ever been married? No. Never. Really? She doesn't like. Really? Not really. <laughs> Do you ever think you're gonna stop giving tattoos or you're gonna keep it going till the end? When she will have an eye problem or when she doesn't see clear, she will stop. In my country, when you're 106, it's almost impossible. Apo Wang Ode, if you could say one message to everybody in the world, what would you tell them? Let's be happy. No stress. She wants to tell the people that everyone should be happy and she wishes that everyone has a good health. I love that. Yeah, we that's, should stay alive. That's a nice, uh, <laughs> it's really a nice message. Words cannot describe how special it has been to meet Wang Ode and visit her amazing village in the Filipino mountains. 
Her story, her artwork, and her lifestyle is so inspiring. And who knows, I could be one of the last ever to get a tattoo from her hands. There is a lot of controversy about her actual age, and as an investigative journalist myself, I think it's important to address it so we can get our facts right. She claims to be 106 years old, and every resource that I found online shows the same. But after spending a few hours with her, I have a really hard time believing she is older than 95. We will never know for sure because she doesn't have a birth certificate. Thank you.